Ellen Goldwhite, escritora, profetisa, pioneira da Igreja Adventista do Sétimo Dia. Autora do Espírito de Profecia, seus livros abrangem assuntos vários, desde a alimentação saudável à educação dos filhos, passando por relacionamento, namoro, casamento, vida espiritual, entre outros. Sua obra-prima sobre o viver cristão feliz, Caminho a Cristo, já foi publicada em cerca de 150 idiomas. Em um agradável encontro, familiares de Ellen White se reuniram em Elms Haven para relembrar, partilhar histórias, memórias. Let's come into the dining room. This is one of the important rooms in the house because serving good nourishing meals was very important for Ellen White. She always had a garden, she had an orchard, and she believed in serving lots of good, simple, natural foods, a good variety. She said, I value my copyist, and I cherish my seamstress, but my cook, who holds the health and the welfare of the family in her hands, is my most valuable helper. These were the everyday dishes, and uh, they had a special set that they used just for Sabbath, because Sabbath was a very, very special occasion. They had flowers everywhere, and they would fix a special uh, food, maybe not uh, a lot more than usual, but there was always something a little special to make Sabbath a special day. She often had visitors, and this is what she wrote about that. She said, I make no change for visitors, whether believers or unbelievers. I intend never to be surprised by an unreadiness to entertain at my table from one to half a dozen extra who may chance to come in, and they did come in too. I have a sim enough simple, healthful food ready to satisfy hunger and nourish the system. If any want more than this, they are at liberty to find it elsewhere. Grandma had a good sense of humor. She really did. Os momentos em que os netos tinham a companhia da avó não eram só a mesa. Nos períodos em que Ellen White não estava dedicada ao seu ministério, eles se reuniam em outros lugares, como ao piano. Other times a family would hear her singing uh, as a rest from her writing. She loved to just sit and sing songs. She had a melodious voice and the family knew that she was having a little rest from her writing. Ellen reunia a família aos sábados à noite para cantar, ouvir histórias, ler a Bíblia, comer pipoca. Era o famoso popcorn meeting, o encontro da pipoca. You know, Ellen White was a well-rounded person. She loved many different things. She loved music, she loved people, she loved animals, she had a sense of humor. I know there are many stories about her sense of humor. And even in this home here at Elmshaven, right up until the time when she died in 1915. Os netos tinham acesso direto a Ellen White por uma escada secreta e eram sempre bem recebidos. Ela se divertia com eles. So for me, I have many, many happy memories of coming here to Elms Haven. And people come to this place from all over the world. This is not a shrine to Ellen White or to her life. Rather, it's a reminder of God choosing this very special, weakest of the week, this young lady, of God choosing her to be his messenger, of her answering that call and dedicating her life to his service. had four sons. Unfortunately, she lost her oldest boy, Henry, when he was just 16. And the baby died at three months, so just left the two boys that grew up, Willie and Edson. Now, Edson never had children, but Willie made up for it. He had seven. And I'm going to acquaint you a little bit now with Ellen White's family 
And this picture of her family, this is a family photo that was taken in 1913. Here is Ellen at the age of 85, just two years before she died. And this is Willie, and it shows all of his family except the youngest son who wasn't yet born. Uh, his wife, um, Ethel May Lacey, is his second wife that he married in Australia, and she was 20 years younger, so they had a younger second family. These two girls, Ella and Mabel, were children of Willie and his first wife, uh, Mary Kelsey. And she contracted tuberculosis when they were in Europe, working in Europe, and she died at the age of 33. Now, Ella was nine years old when her grandmother died, I mean, when her mother died, and she is my mother. And this is her sister, Mabel, who is four years younger than she. Both girls in this picture were both married. This is my father, D.E. Robinson, and this is my brother, Virgil Robinson, and my sister, Mabel Robinson Miller. Now, Mabel in this picture is just two years old. She was five years old when her grandmother died, and she remembers her quite well. One day, my father, Henry, and his twin brother, Herbert, were playing outdoors, and they tried to trace, chase a skunk under the house, and they got the wrong end of the deal. And they smelled so badly that poor grandma Took, went to her mother-in-law, Ellen White, and said, what shall I do? Shall I bury the clothes? And Ellen White said, no, bury the twins. Now, you, want, you would think growing up, as Ellen White's granddaughter would be a rather difficult thing. But you know, we were never considered any different from anyone else. We never felt ourselves as different, we still don't. But it was a privilege, and it was, like I thought my daughter has told me many times, it's a responsibility to be a great-granddaughter of Ellen White. 